Hey there coworkers, it's Hass here and today it's time for another deep talk episode like I've done last time, as after yesterday's YouTube poll and player ranks there's definitely something I think it's worth to talk about. Reaching a higher rank has been a source of stress and toxicity in many video games and so Splatoon 3 is also not too different about it, especially since higher ranks will give you better rewards from the newly introduced King Salmonids and it's definitely not a casual friendly system as we talked about in the why is Salmon Run so unpopular video. Along with better rewards, higher ranks usually also come with the social benefits of bragging and bragging rights, where you can show off your shiny golden badges or banners and assert dominance over the players thinking you're actually better than them. The other very common phenomenon with ranking systems is players denying the accuracy of them through blaming their teammates for their losses or getting stuck in certain ranks that isn't their fault, which is often called ELO hell in other games but in Splatoon it's just something I call freelance shaming. Now a lot of these interactions, social or in-game, sadly end up negatively affecting games, to the point that some people got offended over us trying to measure the spread of the player base's skill in Salmon Run in a new poll using ranks as a base of measurement. And I think it's time to have a hearty discussion about this since the issue of freelance shaming is rampant in a lot of Salmon Run communities and it's unproductive and quite unhealthy for everyone frankly, including to your own enjoyment and self-improvement in Salmon Run. Let's start by talking a bit about the ranking system and how it works so we avoid misunderstandings. Salmon Run has a fairly basic ranking system that goes from the tutorial rank of intern all the way up to executive VP 999. But I won't go into details of points and ranks since I assume most of you know that and it isn't really all that interesting anyway. What a lot of people might not know on the other hand is that the difficulty of Salmon Run isn't just about the quota increasing or having more bosses as you rank up, but it's a lot deeper than that. In fact, as you rank up in Salmon Run, multitude of minor changes go through the game, such as lesser Salmonids having a higher chance of being Quahogs the higher you go, Salmonid waves happening a lot more often and also from different positions, along with more bosses spawning at the same time. Additionally, the higher rank it is, the maximum amount of lesser salmonids that can exist on the stage also increase, and considering lesser salmonids can be sometimes a lot worse than bosses, this is a massive difference that gets overlooked. It's also a huge difficulty bump for night waves, as for example, chums and goldies during a glowfly rush wave gets at least twice as fast, I believe, as your hazard level goes up, making the waves significantly harder, and griller waves also go through similar changes. The point I'm trying to make is that the changes that happen as you rank up are a lot more intricate than just splatting bosses and collecting golden eggs, and so if you have holes in your gameplay or the way you play, you can easily get overwhelmed by the next rank despite doing fairly well previously. Less assaminate clearing is definitely such a problem that most freelance still struggles even in EVP ranks, but I could also mention the problem of not properly learning how to do night waves since it isn't totally required until they actually reach the higher difficulty versions. And you can still be good at both of these challenges individually, but perhaps you start struggling the moment all those extra difficulty increases happen on a new hazard level. This general flow of difficulty bump also results in ranks not just in PvP, but also in Salmon Run to naturally form stereotypes of gameplay elements that players of each rank struggle with, and no matter how many ranks there are or how spread it is, you can somewhat draw a map of improvement chart where you can observe what you need to practice more in order to improve. This might be obvious to a lot, but it's important to set the basis of our conversation to understand that the reason ranking systems exist is to set an appropriate level of difficulty for you, the player, that you can enjoy the game on or know when and how you need to start practicing more if you want to progress to a higher level. If you understand this, you know that any ranking system will eventually have a peak rank for all players, except the top 1%, where you will simply stop winning all your games and you will lose more often. That's how ranking systems work. They challenge you until you can't beat the challenge anymore, and you either accept where you are, or you try to overcome the challenge by learning and practicing. And this is also where the first inconveniences appear in the game, as Salmon Run is pretty terrible at pointing out your own mistakes without actively looking at them yourselves. And it's sadly a natural human reaction to blame other factors such as your teammates in this time of confusion, instead of thinking you might have hit your first skill road bump. The tricky question here is about how much the rest of the team affects the flow of winning versus losing in a team game, which there is no objective way to measure really, except for the player's experience and proof of gameplay. 
but it is nonetheless a problem since a lot of players end up blaming their teammates for losing or getting stuck, which is just straight up unhealthy for the community, since if you consider that you call your teammates idiots, you're also in freelance, so technically there are other people calling you an idiot too. And we didn't get anywhere closer to what could have been better, have we? But we created a pretty toxic discourse. I would say there is definitely a leeway within your own personal skill on how much you can carry, and so your rank could be swaying between professional plus 2 or plus 3, depending on the general RNG of matchmaking, which I think is one of the problems of Salmon Run, that ranks are just too short. Those 100 points are simply not enough to test whether it is a rank for you or not, as 2 or 3 games can already bump you up or down to a different rank without learning anything useful. Don't get me wrong, there are bad games, especially if you aren't better than the rest of the team, and you have to rely on them. In the end, Salmon Run is a team game, and so there will be games that might have been lost due to someone's greater mistake, but it's still going to be a minority in a large pool of games where everyone is constantly making small and small mistakes that could be corrected. It would be much better if ranks would be longer instead, around 200 points with their own checkpoints you can reach, where players have more time to prove whether it's a rank they are capable of clearing consistently, or they should practice a bit more, but without constantly dropping down to a previous rank, which is just annoying. On the other hand, I can say with 100% certainty that if you are in a rank that you believe you're better at, and you really are, then you can carry 95% of your games all the way back to Executive VP, which is still only halfway up the skill ranking of Salmon Run, so it's not an impossibly high goal. And I can personally do that any rotation, and many many players have proven that it's doable, so the notion that freelance hell exists or that it is freelance really holding back players is just not true at all, and it's rather an excuse instead of observing what went wrong. But to also encourage you at the same time, Executive VP, I honestly think, is a rank anyone can achieve, and I might even bet EVP 999 is something anyone can reach if you have the time, despite some gatekeeping and elitism that you can hear about it. It is all a matter of learning some strategies and improving with a good mentality as time goes on, and my goal has always been on this channel to spread this mentality and put out as many resources out there as possible to help you on your journey because all of you are capable of doing this. Keep in mind losing is a natural part of the game, and not every loss has to mean it was someone's fault. Sometimes you all did the best you could, and since it's the appropriate rank for you, it was a challenge you couldn't overcome. And that is fine and natural. That is how we improve. We all make mistakes sometimes too, and so it can happen to your freelance teammates as well. The problem is with the volatile nature of the ranking system, that a single loss or victory has so much effect on your progress and can set you back, which is why I'm an advocate for longer ranks overall. Salmon Run sadly doesn't reward the players for losing, and it becomes a game of winning or losing, which can be very disheartening and discouraging fast. That's on Nintendo to fix it, but we can also do better. Freelance shaming is an unproductive and harmful part of the Salmon Run community, not because it is straight up toxic and ruthless towards your fellow coworkers, but it is also a huge misconception that freelance is the reason players are losing, hugely contributing to a toxic environment that is elitist and gatekeeps newer players to the mode instead of promoting solidarity and helping each other improve at the game. It is also a huge disservice to yourself, since you are convincing yourself that you did everything possible and it is your team who caused all your losses, and it is a mentality that naturally blocks your progress and improving and makes anyone, even the best players, blind to their own mistakes. For this we are moderating the community on my Discord server every day to shut out elitism and freelance shaming and instead guide all discussions like that into productive gameplay reviewing on what could have been done better since there's always a way to win or carry these games, and there are countless resources to back this up and I'm not just making random claims. We are all playing in the same pool of freelance players, and it isn't a matter of luck on who gets the better or worse players, and the only consistent similarity in our games is that we are part of it, and that's what we should focus on. Many players are able to climb all the ranks without issues, no matter the players they get, and have proven time and time again that freelance shaming is just an unhealthy behavior that holds back many players from enjoying Salmon Run more. The sooner we make a change, each of us one by one, the sooner the community will also be a better and more enjoyable place for all. Not to mention the better spreading of resources to help the game mode get better instead of just flaming each other.
So we talked about how the ranking system works in Salmon Run and also how it's really bad to get stuck in a mentality of blaming outside factors. So what's next then? As hard as it can be, I personally recommend everyone to try and ignore ranks altogether. After all, ranks are quite meaningless since we now know that difficulty is controlled by hazard levels, and even if you jump between professional plus 3 or EVP 40, you are relatively close to the very same hazard level. Knowing this, you already free yourself of the burden of being sad about switching ranks, since not much really happened on the scale of difficulty or your own progression, and hopefully Nintendo will improve this in the future. I mentioned earlier that it's relatively clear where players need to improve their gameplay depending on their current ranking, and for example it's also useful to watch your teammates what they're doing wrong, because it's actually very likely that you are doing the same mistakes, and instead of blaming them, you can use them to learn more about yourself and what you can potentially work on. While I understand the improbability of fixing toxic behavior in an online game altogether, I think it's still very much possible to steer a community in a healthier direction, and I personally recommend everyone who cares about Salmon Run to join online communities like Discords, whether it is the Salmon Run server, Griscord, or my own server, and participate in healthy discussions about the game, learn from available resources, and first of all, ask for help or help each other if needed. As a creator, I feel I need to work a lot more on generalist guides and videos where I talk about mistakes of each ranks or tips and resources that can help players make the leap from one rank to the next that isn't only executive VP, so I'll certainly start to work on them as soon as I can. There are also a lot of players who are willing to help, or even VOD review games together where you can learn a lot from just watching your own games. So if you have means to record your gameplay, that's already a massive service you can do to yourself and you would be surprised how much you'll notice about your own mistakes rather than others. Another huge responsibility we all have is to call out bad behavior in the community. It is very easy to pick up bad habits like freelance shaming or trash talking, and it's important to call out players who spread negativity and misinformation in the community such as needing teams in order to rank up in Salmon Run, or that skill doesn't matter and it's all luck about who gets the better teammates because none of this is true. The sooner we start replacing terrible and in general unhealthy habits within the community, the sooner we can all start building a better environment to not only play in, but to potentially making more friends and improving the accessibility and inclusivity of Salmon Run as a game mode. But thank you for joining my pep talk about Salmon Run and freelance overall. I hope once again this deep talk was enjoyable and a good starter to make everyone think on how we can all work on making Salmon Run a better community. But nonetheless, I'm interested in your thoughts, so make sure to share them in the comments section. I also linked the Discord server in the pinned comments, so if you're not part of any of these servers, I recommend joining and starting the journey of self-improvement and community building together as soon as today. My personal goal has always been to make Salmon Run more accessible to everyone, fight elitism and gatekeeping towards newer players, and to also show that everyone can reach EVP 999 in Salmon Run, while also having a lot of fun. We just have to start helping each other more. Thank you for joining everyone, take care, and I'll see you the next time.